Welcome to The Rustic Garden. Today is March 31st, 2018, and this is a compilation video on peas, growing them indoors, outdoors, in peat pots, in cups, in seed cells, in containers, direct sowing them into the ground. I've taken really five years worth of pea videos that I've done, and I put them into one long video with a digital table of contents so you can jump to wherever you'd like to go. One myth I'd like to dispel is you can absolutely start peas indoors. I've been doing it for five, ten years, and they can transplant nicely out into the garden. Again, today's the 31st. Back on February 25th, I put peas into containers. They have not come up yet. On March 4th, I put them into the seed cells. They had the storage bottoms, just like the one back there, on top to protect them from the cold at night. They look okay, very beat up though. If you come over here, I started these indoors on March 14th, and you can see how well they're doing. And the reason you do that is so that you can get a jump on the season and get peas more quickly to your table. Let me go show you what's down in the uh, earth beds. The peas right here were started indoors on February 19th, grew for about three weeks, and then I put them out here in the beginning of March. They were protected with these storage box bottoms through nights of 28 degree temperatures for like seven, 10 days. They survive snow on top. I'll cut in a real quick picture of the snow. Those are dish racks from a thrift store, $1.99 for two. That will protect them from rabbits, but you can see how well they're doing. So you can certainly start peas at different times so that you can get them out into your garden. And I use all kinds of different things I pick up at thrift stores to protect the plants from rabbits. Here's the video. Use the digital table of contents to jump to the parts that are most valuable to you. Nice. But you can see a lot of the plants are doing really well. Now the ones that browned out and died were because the freeze was too bad. But I was able to start peas. Let's take a look. And these are pea plants. And they're doing perfectly fine, protected with these containers. How to get them started. So two weeks from today, when my ground has finally thawed, hopefully, I'll be able to get these into the ground and have a jump on the season. You can provide a lot of frost protection for your cool weather crops by using plastic uh, cups that are rigid. You want the hard ones because you can press them into the ground and the wind's not gonna blow them over. But for the last week, we've had temperatures in the low 20s, even in the teens, and you can see that by adding these cups, most of the plants fared pretty well. well. That one will need to be replaced. But it gave them enough protection that they're going to be okay, at least four out of six. Let me show you what happened to plants that weren't protected, and then I want to show you uh, how the plants did in here in a sort of double protection. Plastic rigid cups and a bag that was pulled up over this. The unprotected peas just couldn't deal with 15 degrees below freezing in some cases. Peas are great at dealing with a frost if you go three, four, five degrees, but when you get down to 10 degrees, 15 degrees below freezing, they're just not gonna make it. And you can see that they've yellowed out and they're dead, they're gonna need to be replaced. Now you can use a clear plastic trash bag to give another uh, level of protection for your cool weather crops. You can also use this to sort of make a hothouse tomato cage if you wanna get your peppers and your tomatoes out early. But again, we got really cold temperatures this week and these are my container peas. The rigid plastic cups work really well. The plastic bag pulled up and closed off like a teepee gives another level of protection and basically you're making two microclimates. The microclimate from the plastic bag and from the plastic cup. And I can actually feel the heat pouring out of here. And they did really well. These are gonna be perfectly fine. One tip to keep in mind is today it's now 60 degrees. So with the sun, uh, out, no clouds or anything like that, the inside temperature of this can heat up pretty high. So when it creeps into the 60s, you really want to quickly get this tent down because you could actually burn your plants out. Welcome to heat. the Rustic Garden. Today I want to talk to you about three general types of pea uh, categories which you would plant. Uh, there's a lot of varieties. There's dwarf peas, tall peas, purple flowers, white flowers, um, wrinkled peas, purple pods, plain pods. Those are different variations, but there are three main categories. Before I get to that, you want to make sure you know when to plant your cool weather crops. Peas like a light frost, 70 degrees. This is my dog, Lucky. And when it gets colder here, the static builds up in the house. And you can see it really in my dog's hair. When the static leaves the house, when her hair is no longer sticking out like that, that's when I know to plant peas in my garden. 
Not everybody has a long-haired dog, so let me just show you um, some tips. Peas like 40 degree soil to get started. Anything lower, they're not going to germinate. They like moist soil, so they don't like soil that is soaking wet or they're going to rot. They like phosphorus, don't give them a lot of nitrogen, and the yields of peas decrease as the days increase. So you really want to get them out early into the ground. There are three major types. There's English peas, snap peas, pod peas. Those are the three types of peas that you can really, categories that you can plant. And it gets confusing because they go by different names. So the major categories are the English peas, shelled peas, shelling peas, and those are peas that are just for the mature PMs, pea themselves. You don't eat the pod. Here's a bunch of different peas. I'm going to show you what they are after I show you the categories. You have your snap peas. The key word is snap. Anything that has the word snap in it is an edible pod with mature peas and you let them mature and when you break them they make that classic snap sound. That's how they got their name. And then you have sugar peas or snow peas and these are really the flat pods or the immature pods and it's often what you see in stir fry. And when you go to the stores you're going to uh, see all kinds of names. These are Alaskan peas, and these are actually shelling peas. And sometimes if you look on the back, it tells you what they are. I actually had to look these up because it always doesn't tell you. Usually when there's nothing written on the package, it's a shelling type pea. And again, the shelling peas, you only eat the peas themselves. And then you can go to, I said, here's a dwarf variety. Um, this is little, hey look. Who's going to get a treat? And when you look on this package to figure out what kind of pea it is, it doesn't tell you. So I had to look this up online. And this is also a shelling pea. So these are just grown for the peas themselves. Then you have a super sugar snap. And it gets confusing because the word sugar is in it and the word snap is in it. Over here you have sugar peas or you have snow peas. Anytime that it says snap, it could say sugar, sugar, sugar snap you know, super snow sugar snap. The word snap means that it's an edible pod, mature pea, full-size pea. And that's what you always look for whenever it says snap. This one says melting sugar snow pea. So this is more of a stir fry and it's just a flat pod with in immature peas. This is right on the um, package that says a shell pea. So this is another shelling pea. Then you have the sh uh, super snappy. Again, the key word is snap. This is a pea that you grow to full size. You can eat the pod and you can eat large mature peas. The uh, dwarf gray sugar only says sugar. And I don't know if you can really see it on there, but these are um, the flat pods with immature peas. Again, your stir fry type pea. You have the Oregon sugar pod. Sugar, keyword, sugar or snow. Another flat variety with immature peas, your stir fry. And then you have your uh, Cascadia Sugar Snap. Don't be confused by the word sugar. Again, snap. So you have really three varieties. Um, full pea, you don't eat the pod. They're usually called English peas or shelled peas. Snap peas, which is a nice um, full pea, full-size pea, full-size pod. Very sweet. This is what I tend to grow more of. I highly recommend the snap peas. And then you have the sugar peas or the snow peas, which are the flat pods or the immature peas. I want to talk to you about growing peas as transplants. I was always told peas do not like to have their roots touched or disturbed in any way and that you could not grow them as transplants. And these are peas right here that are examples of how that's simply not true. You can absolutely grow peas as transplants. And let me show you what I mean by transplants. You can use your standard tomato cells, you can use recycled flower can, uh, cells, and you can use something that falls in between. And the peas that are in these buckets were all grown as transplants for a couple weeks in Most these cells. The important thing, and I'll stress throughout the video, is your peas really have to be seed started in these different containers and then get outside into wherever you're going to plant them within two to four weeks. These are all overgrown. And let me show you an example starting backwards. Today is the 13th. These were planted on March 6th. And in about a week, they're going to be ready to go out. And you can already see the roots coming out. If you start them in smaller cells like this, you only have about two weeks 
from when they germinate to get them outdoors because they become too big. And we've had, of course, our typical East Coast weather where I'm getting nights of frost and freeze. Now, frost for these plants are okay. They can handle anywhere from 32 degrees to like 28 degrees and do perfectly fine. That's why I start When you're in a zone like I am and you get the four seasons, you can't get your peas out to the ground right now because it's frozen and it's soggy. But you can start them indoors early. And you can start them anywhere from 10 to 21 days. And the reason I say that is, for instance, these peas in here are in peat pots. And look at the root system already. And they were planted, today's the 19th. These are planted on the 11th. So that's only eight days worth of growth. When you're holding them in here, you gotta make sure moisture stays in the bottom of the container. So plan to start these peas 10 to 14 days before you would get them out into your garden or out into your containers. But this is a great way to save some time, get them growing, and you'll get peas earlier to the table. It's real easy, it's real simple. I set up my um, starting mix, pack the soil in there nice and tightly because peas have a really massive root system. We're good to go with sugar ann peas in here. You can put one seed in, you can put two seeds in. It's up to you, but you can do it this quickly. I like to put in two seeds. You can always thin if you want to, but I found you can really pack peas into a space and they will do perfectly fine. So these are the sugar ants, and this is all you gotta do. Press them in pretty far down, at least halfway. Those are the sugar ants. I'm just gonna show you how quickly you can do this whole tray. And this over here, only eight days worth of growth. And what I've been doing is every day, I take these out and give them an hour or two of sun so that they're already being acclimated or hardening, hardening off to the elements. Because when you have stuff that grows inside, once they've been growing a week, two weeks, three weeks, they really don't have any tolerance to the One sun. One tip I have is when you're growing plants inside, they're not used to the sun. So if you let them grow in there three, four weeks and then bring them outside, the sun will actually burn them. Well, once they germinate indoors, take them outside for an hour or two and let them get the sun. And here are my peas. Started on February 11th. They're all doing really, really well. That's only eight days of growth. And you can see in the peat pots, the root systems are already coming through. Don't worry about that. There's a lot of myths where people say, oh, you can't um, seed start peas and transplant them. Well, I've been doing this for years and it's perfectly effective. Now, I don't really like using the peat pots for starting my seeds, except for peas, because they're gonna go straight into the ground in um, the peat pots. These are Oregon sugar snap. Now, for the plastic trays, you saw the root system. Let's see if we got one coming in here. You see that they're coming out. Um, let me just use one of these. Finish that. If you're gonna use the plastic, make sure you break the bottoms up. This way, when you pull your tea transplant out, the roots don't get caught on the plastic or get damaged. And a lot of people say, oh, you can't grow peas in containers or seed starts like this because they don't transplant well. And that's not true. I've been doing this for years. If you're careful, they're going to transplant perfectly fine. Now, if you want to start them early and hold them for closer to 14 days or longer, start them in cups. Put two in there. They'll be able to stay in here longer because the root systems have a lot more space to grow. They're not going to be growing out of the bottom of the cup right Starting away. Starting mix across the top. You're going to bottom water these. Just fill up the bottom of the tray. Let the water soak in for about 15 minutes. Whatever doesn't get absorbed in 15 minutes, just pull pour out. These are good to go into containers. I put them into my containers first because they warm up and they're easier to manage. And then followed by the container plantings, these are good to go out into the earth. Bed. Welcome to the Rustic Garden. Today I want to show you how you can start peas indoors about 10 to 14 days before you might put them out into the ground. And the reason you want to start peas indoors is number one, you can. And it's going to save you really 14 to 21 days, about three weeks of time versus waiting for the ground to warm up to 40 degrees, waiting for the uh, moisture in the soil to kind of drain out. It's always really too wet in really early, early spring or um, late winter 
Peas seeds themselves will rot if they're sitting in soil that's too soggy. So starting them indoors is a great way to take care of uh, those issues. And by the time they get out into the ground, your ground's not only going to be 40 degrees, it'll probably be warmer. You would have been able to work the soil and it really will work out well for you. And you can also put them into uh, containers, um, raised beds, the ground, all kinds of stuff. And I'm going to show you how to do that over the year. First thing is I'm going to grow about, I don't know, 20 varieties of peas this year. So I'll give you guys updates on how each variety goes and, and what's happening. They're going to go into raised beds, they're going to go into containers. Um, I'm going to put them all over the place because I really love them and I'm like, you know, why do I only plant 40 plants or something like that? Let's do more. I started this variety of pea. This is a purple potted pea. I forget the name of it. It might have only been purple pot, but I bought them on eBay. These were started on January, I'm sorry, on February 10th. Today is February 23rd. 13 days worth of growth. You can see all of the roots. And there used to be a myth that I believed that you couldn't start peas indoors because the roots damaged these. And you can see they're just coming out of the peat pot. That would be true if you started them in plastic cells. Start them in peat pots, and I'll show you how to do that. These will also get transplanted into containers today in a separate video. They've just grown incredibly fast. I've got snow outside. I can't get them outside into containers, so I'm going to do them in the house. So to set this up, one, I recommend peat pots for starting peas that are going to go into your containers, that are going to go into the ground. If you're not going to do a whole mass of them, you can put them into styrofoam cups. You just label them. I like the styrofoam cups. You can put them into the peat cups, or you can buy a setup like this. It'll give you 3, 6, 9, 12, 15, 18 containers like this. It costs about $4.50 for the whole setup. Or just go with cups. 51 cups for about $1.25. You can't really go wrong with that. Now, to set them up, uh, let me just start with a couple of things first. This variety is called the uh, Burpina Early. This is a shelling pea. There's three main types. I did a video on it. This is a, a pod that you cannot eat, so you're growing it just for the peas. This is a sugar snap, um, Oregon, I'm sorry, sugar pod. This is a flat pea with immature peas on the inside. It's more like what you see in Chinese food. So this is like the Chinese stir fry pea. And then this is a sugar snap, which is a plump, full de fully developed pea and an edible pod. So I'm going to do probably 20 different peas in these three categories. This is how I set them up. Right on a, on a uh, popsicle stick, write down what you have. Also put one in here in case this falls off. You don't want to lose what you're doing. And believe me, I've dropped stuff before. I've knocked stuff down and lost track of what's what. The peas are pretty large in this setup. All I do is fill this up with potting soil. This is not starting mix. This is miracle Grow potting mix. You can save yourself some money. It's about two... Um, let me see. I actually got it right down here. It's a two cubic feet of moistened and fertilized um, potting soil. It's not as fine as your starting mix. You don't need to, to plant these in starting mix. Potting mix is just fine. So I fill up the peat trays and then I just press down pretty deeply almost to the bottom and that's where I'm going to drop the two peas into. Let me finish it over here on the table. So just press down nice and deep peas really want to be planted about an inch to two inches deep depending on what kind of soil you have. Can't quite get an inch in these. So in each hole two peas Press them in if they're up a little bit too high. Peas that come out of packs like this will probably both germinate. If your peas are a year old, germination drops pretty quick. I suggest you store them in a Ziploc bag. I'm not going to do all of these to kind of save you some video time. But once they're in, about that deep, throw some soil on it. And these will be watered in. Label and make sure your sticks are in there and you're good to go. These are going to be sugar snaps.
And if you're not growing a whole lot of peas or you're putting them into containers or you don't need to get them into the ground, really putting them in, in these cups is the best way to go. Two peas, whatever container you want to use, just like that. The cups I like because I can write right on there what they are. They're a lot cheaper than these. And the pea pots I don't really use at this size. They tend to get too moldy and they're just a problem. They're, they're fine for peas because you can put them right in the ground. But I don't grow my tomatoes or anything in that. They all go into this, this, or actually recycle containers. So once they're in there, you want to press them down about an inch. Don't worry if you go past that. In the case of the peat pots, you would just plant them right in the ground. The peas that are in the styrofoam cups and these plastic containers, you'll just be able to pop them out and plant them. And then, once they're done, just drop some soil into the holes, make sure everything is covered up, water them in, and in 10 to 14 days you're going to have different germinating or different rates of germination for your peas. You definitely want to make sure this pea gets into a container very soon. I'm going to do that in the next video. But just keep in kind of ballpark idea somewhere between 10 to 14 10 to 20 days is when you want to start these indoors so that you can get them outside and it will really save you about three weeks of, of uh, growing time so that you can get your peas you know to your to your table welcome to the rustic garden today I want to talk to you about acclimating your peas to the outdoor temperatures to the outdoor Sun and a process that I use you have to acclimate all of your transplants that you're growing inside to the outdoors because they're not used to the sun and basically what would happen is today's a very sunny day finally thank you um, the sun will actually sunburn bleach out the leaves kill the leaves and these plants will be damaged they have no tolerance to the UV rays or anything like that so you slowly have to introduce them to the sun outdoors they'll also get used to the cold weather they also get used to the wind as your peas are growing and all your seedlings grow it's a good idea to run your hand through them that will help them uh, stimulate it will stimulate the stems make them think that it's windy and they will actually toughen up and be a, a whole lot stronger the peas today's March 7th the peas have been growing uh, between to the, let's see that's March 20 or that's February 24th so they're kind of tall and these were started on the 28th I'd like to get the peas out about this size into the Sun for an hour or two each day that will toughen them up that will harden them off that will get them used to the outdoors so I would put them out for an hour or two on a sunny day like today maybe a little bit longer if the day is cloudy but then bring them in and then they stay indoors you know for the rest of the day now these are getting a little bit tall I would love to have these in the ground right now or get them into containers right now but I can't because when you look out here you can see what my area looks like so for peas, as soon as they sprout up, try and get them into the sun for an hour or two each day. This way, when they're finally ready to go out into your yard, you don't have to then spend another week of getting these used to the outdoor. You've already done it as they were growing inside. And peas really handle um, acclimation or hardening off uh, well if you do it in this type of this process. This is about two tablespoons of organic fertilizer. Just put two tablespoons in the top and this is old soil peas don't need much in the way of soil prep you can put them into your container as soon as the container soil is no longer frozen and you don't really even need a lot of fertilizer if any because peas are able to fix their own nitrogen through the root system and they can pull the nitrogen out of the air it's this easy you can pack peas in here too we're going to put six holes in there two peas in each hole you'd be surprised too at how many peas can be put into a small space you can thin them if you want to to one per hole and I recommend somewhere between five and ten peas will do perfectly fine in here 
as long as you can keep it moist. Your peas are planted. They're going to need something to crawl up. These are actually uh, sugar ant peas, so they're dwarf. They're only going to get um, somewhere between, I think, two and four feet tall. They don't need a lot of climbing, but most of your peas will. Just use your tomato cages because it's way too early for planting tomatoes anyway. Drop a cage in, and that sets up one container that I loosened up the soil to about four inches deep just with my hand. One or two tablespoons of fertilizer in a space about, you know, that wide and then just drop in your transplants these are the plastic cells and I was telling you make sure you open up these bottoms before you seed start so that the root system comes out you can see that it's a little bit curled just loosen it up and you can just drop them in just like that put the soil maybe this much over where the level is right here for the seed starts press it in and you're good to go to do straight peas again make sure that your soil is draining well and you can do these one inch apart one inch deep two inches apart however you really want to do it peas really grow well they don't mind being packed together and you would just go ahead and just drop them in you know anywhere from one to two inches even three inches apart whatever you feel like doing they're going to grow as long as your soil is draining well once you get to that, or once you finish planting them, the biggest pest for me are really rabbits. Rabbits will come down and just shear down all of my peas. Piece of chicken wire laid across your seed starts, even the transplants, they will grow through the spaces here. Rabbits do not like crawling on this because their feet get stuck and they're not going to mess with it. So just let the peas grow up through the spacing in a chicken wire. And again, don't forget to drop in some sticks, tomato cages, whatever you want to use. One tip that I have is if you have containers outside, because peas fix their own nitrogen, they really pretty much take care of themselves as long as you don't have totally spent soil. Coming out of the cold of winter, pour some boiling water into your containers outside. That will warm the soil through. That kills off any kind of uh, eggs that have been laid in there and that really gets your container quickly within you know half an hour ready for planting. Inside if you're starting fresh um, or you're starting with fresh soil you want to use potting mix. You don't need anything special. In this case I'm using a miracle Grow potting mix that does have fertilizer in it. You don't have to use that but definitely use a potting mix. Sometimes I use my own. Don't think you have to do anything crazy and fill this up with starting mix. It's just too expensive. So when your peas have been growing somewhere between 10 to 20 days and again these have only gro been growing for almost two weeks but look at the root system these are purple potted peas they do extremely well in contrast these are gray dwarf peas that I started at the same time and they're just starting to break through a little bit of a root system so I can't say you know plant these exactly in 10 days into containers but when they get to four inches tall they're really ready to go in. When you see root systems like that, they're ready to go in. Peas are not as fragile as you think. I used to think that you can't start peas indoors. So all I'm going to do is cut out five plants. There's ten here, so five are going to go into this cell. Woo! Well, may have lost one. They are a bit tangled. Oh, that looks fine. I put two peas per cell. You can do one or two. It's not going to matter to the pea. You can plant a lot into this container. This is actually ten plants. In my mind I was thinking five plants, but there's two in each, so I'm just going to do four. You can plant somewhere between four and eight peas in a container. You can even do a little bit more. All you're going to do is make sure you tear the peat pot a little bit without disturbing the roots. You want to fold down the top of the peat pot. If that sticks above the soil on a hot day, it will actually wick water um, away from the root system. This whole thing will dry out and it will harm the plant. So you want the peat tops to be buried. Again, there's the root system. There's about three inches here. You can add soil if you need to. Three inches lets you really water it. 
put a nice planting base in, I mean a planting hole in, work, let's see, it's going to be hard to see, work the root system in a little bit like that so that it's not being smashed, but kind of sitting in a hole, and then sort of fill around it, and then just gently press it in. I'm going to do that again. You know, drop it in. If that's the hole, let's just say that's the hole, you're putting it in like this, not so that it's not smashed, but the roots are dangling, and then you just backfill around it so that the soil collapses around the roots. Forgot to roll the peat top down on that. Roll it down, same thing. Dig a hole, and it doesn't have to be perfect. You could, you know, really just drop them in here and smash the root and it's going to grow, but take a little bit of care, a little bit less of a shock on the plant, they're going to do better. Now, I didn't roll the peat shell down on that one either, but you can see the shell is covered, the plants are covered. I'm going to put another handful of soil in here just to make sure they're well covered. That leaves about two inches, two or three inches will let you water these plants really easily. You can just fill it up and let it soak in. Really important, you know, maybe a dime size, a little bit smaller, at least one hole, if not two, right in the bottom of the container. You can put holes in the bottom, but if you have a wood deck like mine, the water drains out the bottom it stays damp under there and leaves a really nice green uh, algae and moldering under it. So I like the water to drain out the side, then the sun hits it and dries up the water. One of the things you want to keep in mind with peas is that they, they are frost tolerant, which means they can handle 29, 30, 31 degree weather just for a night of frost, but they can't really stay frozen. It's February here, as I said, and the nights are below 30. They're not going to survive out there, but I can start them inside, I can put them in a bucket, and I can move the bucket in and out of the house to get peas earlier. As the season progresses, or as winter progresses, and the ground is no longer frozen, peas also run into this issue, is that when you plant them in a ground that's cold, 40 degrees, soggy, or you're getting a lot of rain for a week, those seeds will germinate, but then they usually mold and die. So this is one way to really get peas uh, started into a five gallon container and out into your Fill garden. It up. Press a good press down about you're not really going to go an inch, but almost a half an inch. And I'm not going to do all of them, but you get the picture. Drop in one pea seed. Whoop. I'm dropping them everywhere. Make sure they're down about a half an inch. so that they look like this. And then just cover them with dirt. Put them in your cell flat bottom water and in about three weeks you're going to end up with peas that look like this. And they grew nicely, they're ready to go in. And you want to catch the peas when the roots start coming out the bottom. Even though they're pretty hardy, you don't want to damage the plant pulling the root out. So once they start coming through here, you have to think about getting them into the container. Same thing with this one. And I'm going to go with the biggest peas now and just gently squeeze out the plug. You don't, it should come up easily like that, yeah. You don't want to snap the pea off, they are very fragile. And you can see the roots right in there. In a bucket, you can do four to eight plants. I'm going to put five into here. And I'm just trying to take out the biggest plants, biggest seedlings. And be as gentle as you can with them. And you can see the roots aren't getting disturbed that much. They're ready to be transplanted. 
And because I'm putting them in a container, I can harden them off to the elements, which means putting them out for a couple of hours with peas and then bringing them back inside so they can get used to the elements. You're going to want to plant your pea right to about here. You don't want to go up too high. And all you're doing is digging a hole, dropping the pea in, filling it around the side and pressing it, pressing it in. Now the soil I'm using here has a lot of starting mix in it only because my bags outside were frozen and I didn't have a chance to get to the store. But you can use any garden soil mix that has a lot of organic matter in it like peat moss. I'm going to just show you something with that pea in a second. So I'm putting in four peas in here, just dropping it in. And you can see, you know, they look great. I will put it outside for an hour or two for a couple of days, bring it back inside. Once the peas harden off to the elements outdoors, I'll leave this outside as long as the temperatures are over 30 degrees. Let them grow. If I'm going to get nights of hard frost or even any kind of frost, I'm going to bring the pea bucket in. I just wanted to show you what it looks like germinating. There's the pea, there's the sprout, and here's the roots that come out. And I'm going to see if I can save this one after showing you that. But the pea itself is what tends to germinate and mold up when you have wet, soggy soil. So by starting your peas indoors, you get a nice 70 degree temperature. They grow nicely in seed cells. They transplant easily to five gallon containers. Welcome to the Rusted Garden. Today's June 4th and this is one area where I grew peas. And what I wanted to do today was show you how well uh, these pea plants grew. And then I'm going to cut in the video where I actually planted these from transplant peas. Peas that I grew in peat pots. And I just wanted to sort of dispel the rumor that you can't grow peas in either the plastic seed starting trays or peat pots like I did or even styrofoam cups and transplant them into the ground. Some people say they don't like to be transplanted. Well, that's not true. As long as you take care in transplanting them, they do perfectly fine. These are Cascadia peas. Today again is June 4th and they went into the ground somewhere um, probably towards the end of March, but they were seed started in peat pots and grew about two weeks in them before I got them out here. M maybe actually about three weeks and then I got them into the ground. And that three weeks of growth really saves you time and helps you put in established plants. When you put peas in the ground in March when it's still cold or rainy, they do have a tendency sometimes not to germinate or to rot. So using transplants from either the peat pots or from your styrofoam cups or from the plastic um, seed starting trays, you can really get more peas into the ground, get a jump again on the beginning of the season, and you can see how well they're really doing. There's plenty of peas on there that I need to pick over the next couple of days. It's starting to get warm here, so the plants are going to start dying out. But these are planted in the ground. They're nice and tall. And just comparison, I have a five-gallon container in there, and it's the same variety of peas. They didn't grow as tall, so peas sometimes don't do as well height-wise when they're in containers, but there's still a lot of production on them. So this was a very successful crop of peas, and now I'm going to cut in the video and show you how I transplanted them in there how to get the peas that I talked about growing in pea pots out into your garden. Today's March 29th and the last two weeks out in my uh, area it's been too cold. The nights have been like 25 even sometimes 20 degrees and even though peas would survive they weren't really good to grow so I held them in my greenhouse a little bit longer than I want. These are Cascadia snow peas that were planted on February 23rd. If you're going to do this method you want to time it so the peas grow in these pots for about three weeks four weeks at the longest. These have been growing almost five weeks and you can see the roots are pretty long. There's sort of a myth that says you can't start peas in containers and put them into the yard, into the garden, because they don't like having their roots disturbed. And that's true. These are a little bit long, but we're not going to disturb them. We're just going to build a, a trench, drop them in completely flat, and then fill around it. The way that I set up my planting area is first, this is about a six foot planting area. You can't see all of it. Um, I turned, I put and down and just make sure it's fairly loose and then you build a trench and the trench should be uh, deep enough that the peas obviously get covered but also that the peat moss gets covered. You don't want any of the peat moss trays sticking above the soil. That will actually wick water away and dry out the root systems. And you can see I'm just dropping them down. 
let the roots lie wherever they are. Let me move that. And I'm going to plant this whole row and I'll come back and show you how I use cut uh, branches from my fruit trees for trellises and also I have to put a chicken wire um, cage over this because I have rabbits that will come and just shear these down. So once you get the trench set up, you can see it's going to be about level to the garden soil. Just fill in around it gently. You don't really want any gaps and drop the soil around it. Make sure the peat moss, if you have like areas where you have separation between the peat trays, just make sure you fill it in. You don't want any air gaps in there. And just work the soil slowly around the trays. And that's all you really need to do. It's raining today, so I'm not going to water it in. You fertilized it lightly. Peas fix their own nitrogen, and they don't need much in the way of fertilizer. So this is how you get a jump start on a season, especially in my area when it was 20 degree, 25 degree nights. If I put direct seed in here, the seeds would have just sat and probably rotted. We even got a couple of snow. Peas are vegetables that you can grow in cool weather. So you have a, a uh, season in the spring when you plant them in the spring. Summer comes, it gets too hot, but then you can plant them again in the fall. It's August 4th. Peas are a great vegetable. If you've uh, purchased peas from a store, you've never tasted fresh peas. And what I mean by that is a pea, once picked, the sugar starts breaking down. So even if it gets to you in two or three days at your grocery store, you've never tasted a fresh pea. Peas are easy to grow. I'm going to show you how to grow them in a container, and I hope that you give this a try. Um, I'm going to plant uh, sugar pod peas. These are the flat peas that you often see in stir fries. There's different varieties. I have videos that talk about different kinds of peas, but these are going to be sugar pod type. And a pack of seeds costs you about $2. This bucket costs um, $4 at Home Depot. One thing you want to do to prep it is you want to drill holes in it. If you don't have a drill, you can use a nail and a hammer, but you want to put in 15 or 20 holes. No plants like to sit in water. So this is a drainage hole, so when it rains, you uh, have drainage and the water will come out of the bucket. Now again, peas remember, like the cool weather. Even though it's August, we're going to give them four weeks of growing uh, to start growing in the container. When the cool weather comes, they'll be about this tall. They'll start to take off the flower and you'll have great fresh peas. So here we have a bucket. It costs you $4. If you want to um, go to your bakery, to uh, fast food places by you, um, any kind of store that preps food, you can get these buckets for free and you can save some money. Now you can fill this with soil from your garden um, or your yard. You can mix it in. You can really put as much, uh, you can put any kind of dirt in here. Peas have uh, a root system that sort of fix nitrogen and give them nutrients themselves. Not all vegetables do that. So peas are really, really easy to grow. But I bought this soil. This was $4 a bag. It's one cubic foot. And all you do to grow peas is fill your bucket up. Fill it nearly to the top. Make sure you settle it down. Pack it in. You want to go a little more to the top than that. And a little more. And you can see the planting base is pretty firm. That's one thing. You don't want loose soil or your peas will drop down. I'm going to have you put in eight peas and if they all come up you're going to remove the four weakest. But you only, if you're just starting out for the first time with gardening, start with four pea plants. They're a lot easier to manage. But you're going to go down about an inch. Just make one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And what you're doing is you're planting eight peas because <clears throat> sometimes they all don't germinate. And rather than wait, you know, for four peas to come up that don't, you put in eight, you thin out if you have too many. And if you're not sure, don't worry about the depth. depth. I don't want you to stress out. If you put the pea in, you know, this far it's going to grow. If you put it in that deep, it's going to grow. 
just make eight holes. Look for peas that aren't cracked. Oh, there goes the seed packet. The storm is actually on the way. Hopefully I get done. Drop the peas in. Two in that hole, don't worry about it. Remember, you're gonna thin this out to four peas when they get about this tall, when they're about four inches tall. Just cover them up. This soil happens to have fertilizer in it. You can, uh, you know, use the soil out of your yard that doesn't have any fertilizer, but you can use a liquid fertilizer to give them a little boost when they're growing. But any kind of soil, don't stress about what kind of soil to put in there. Just get a container, fill it up about this tall, put in eight pea seeds. The other thing that you want to do, these bamboo poles are about five foot tall and I got them at Home Depot. You're going to just put in four of them because peas have hollow root systems, or I'm sorry, hollow stems and they're very fragile so they have to climb up something because if they hang over they're going to snap and break off. So you put this in here, your peas will climb onto this. You can also, if I can grab this, you can buy some jute or string, whatever you have, and you would just tie it every couple of inches like this going up and that will give your piece something else to climb on. Welcome to the Rusted Garden. Today in Keep It Simple, I want to show you how to grow fall peas. It's about 95 degrees right now. I'm sweating. It's too hot for peas if they were going to be producing and you know you're trying to harvest them, but it's not too hot to get them started. In fact, now that it's July 17th, in most areas, I'm in Maryland Zone 7, you want to start your fall peas now. They need a good 70 days of non-frosting weather to fully mature. Pea plants, actually, the leaves can take a frost, but the flowers can't. So if you don't start these early enough, like right now, your peas are going to get to size, they're going to flower, they're going to start forming, and if a frost comes, it's actually going to kill out the flowers and the peas, but the leaves would be okay. So you want to start now, and I'm going to show you how to do it in two different containers. The setup is simple. We're not going to use a lot of fertilizer. There's two peas that I recommend, and you can get these at Home Depot right now. You can get them online if you need to. Just get them sent to you quickly, because you really do want to get them started now. These are melting sugar peas or snow peas, and these are basically the flat peas that you get in like Chinese food or you see in Chinese food. Anytime that it says snow pea, it's the flat shell that's edible and you don't really get mature peas inside of there. The other variety that I really recommend is the Cascadia Sugar Snap. And this is a completely edible pod with full mature peas in there. So you just break this off, you can eat the pea straight. Both of these can be eaten right off the vine. The snow pot or the snow peas and that's the key snow peas are flat pods with with peas that do not mature inside so you're just basically getting the pod the sugar snap is a fully mature pea inside of a pod and the pod is edible and it's two different varieties the cascadia is delicious if you can only get one grab the cascadia now to set this up use any kind of dirt that you want peas fix their own nitrogen. They have a root system that works with a relationship with um, bacteria, microbes, and they fix their own nitrogen. They don't need a lot of fertilizer. They don't need good soil. We're just going to use a water-soluble fertilizer. I'll show you how to do that. 10-gallon container, a hole in here. Your worst enemy for peas is having a, a container that doesn't drain. If it fills up with water, the roots are going to rot, the peas are going to die. So about two inches up, put a hole in here. No holes on the bottom. You can do that if you want. I like to have a little bit of a, re a reserve in my container so when it's hot like today, water stays in there and the, and the soil won't dry out. These are containers of basically used soil. It's dry. These are potato vines. I'm just going to leave them in there. I've already harvested the potatoes out of here. And again, any kind of soil. This is topsoil. I have a neighbor who's moving and they just gave me their extra stuff. They don't want to take it with them. Plain old topsoil. All you want to do is just fill up your container. 
The soil does not matter that much. There's even chunks of clay or something in here. I don't know what it is. Even rocks. I have some garden soil that has more peat moss in it. It's a little bit wet. It was in the rain last night. I'm just going to mix that into the top so that it holds a little bit more moisture because when your seeds are germinating you want them to stay moist. Okay, you can't get much easier than that. It was used dirt that I used for the potatoes, some plain old topsoil that has nothing in it, and then a little bit of my leftover garden soil that has more peat moss and organic matter in it. Okay, you're set up. Now, in something this size, you can really put in easily 8 to 12 pea plants. And all I'm going to do is drop one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight on the outside, nine, ten. Let me put these down. And they're just around the circle. Push them down about one inch. I told you this is not difficult. If you've always wanted to grow peas, now is the time. It is really, really simple. I'll do a follow-up video on this too so that you can see the growth and the harvest. All right, 10 pea seeds are in here. Cover it up. You're gonna need to trellis on something. Any kind of stick, you can use your tomato cages. Just put them in now. These are going to get almost five feet tall, so these sticks aren't going to be tall enough, but it's a good start. And over time, I'll just put some string around here, and the peas will trellis right up this. Let me move this out of the way, and I'm going to show you an even easier way. Let me take these out so it's not blocking my face. But you'll definitely need something to trellis, and again, go ahead and just put a tomato cage in there. Now, this is a brand new setup, you know, soil, seeds. That's a 10 gallon container. This is a five gallon container. I have plenty of videos on growing peas in these containers. I wanna show you how easy it is. This was a tomato plant. It is to get peas started for the fall. Take out all the old plant, plants, weeds. This was a silvery fir tomato. Fluff the soil up a little bit. I'm gonna put just a little bit more in because I lost some taking those plants out. Mix it in a little bit. Again, I'm not adding any fertilizer. Peas don't need calcium. They don't need all these amendments. Looks just like that. Six seeds. Four, five, six. You could do more if you wanted. Press them in one inch. Now you've converted your old tomato bucket or your old vegetable bucket into fall peas. Press them down about one inch. Again, you need to put some stakes in there for them to trellis up. And I wanted to show you how they've grown over the last uh, five to seven weeks. These are container peas that I planted in March, late March, and I basically put in anywhere from three to five peas into the containers. These are my containers that overwintered. You also see lettuce that I planted. Um, some greens that overwintered, but I did plant the peas end of March and they're ready to harvest. You can see uh, several peas in this container. It's supported by the tomato cages. By the time these peas uh, die out, the tomatoes will be ready for the cages so you can reuse those. I also have a structure made out of bamboo to make uh, a TP supports for the peas, but you can just see all the peas that are ready. When you harvest a pea, make sure 
you just break the tip off uh, this part with your fingernail. If you tug on peas, you're going to break the plant. Um, the plant is hollow, so they're, they're very, very fragile. So just grab the tip of the pea that's attached to the stem and break it off. And you can see all the peas that are on here. Peas grow great in containers. Here's a large pea. And there's probably, you know, 30, 40 peas ready all over the place. And you can see them growing everywhere. I do have two types. I have the edible pea pod and the standard pea. And you can see these containers, a couple five gallon buckets. But these containers mostly were planted towards the end of March. It's May 21st now. Coming around the back, you can see the five gallon buckets. These are the peas that I planted for the video. And you can see the plants are smaller. And that's probably because in there I have, uh, in the center plant here, um, I think I have eight peas planted. Same with this one. But you can see there's plenty of peas. These are the edible pea pods. And they're just packed full of peas. These aren't quite as big. They were planted after the peas that I just showed you. But there's a lot of pods that are ready. Again, they're supported with the wire cage. And you can just see all the peas that are ready. Now, one of the things I talked about is if you put, um, you can put anywhere from really three peas to eight peas in a, in a five gallon bucket. But if you put in more plants like I do, you can see the dried out leaves in there. That's because I did forget to water it for a day. The bucket did dry out and it did harm the plant. Now, these peas aren't as large as the ones I showed you up there on my deck. And you have to do a little bit of math. If you put, for instance, in a five gallon bucket, you put in four pea plants, and those four pea plants tend to grow larger and say they produce 100 peas each, 100 pea pods. You get 400 peas. If you put eight plants in that only grow 70 pods per plant, and the plants are smaller, yeah, they are smaller, but you do end up with eight times seven, 560 pods of peas versus 400. So there's a balance somewhere between the number of peas that you put in the pot in the container and let that plant grow to full size to kind of crowding the plants in there yet still getting a, a yield or a harvest that's greater than maybe putting three or four peas in there. Now that was a lot to say. Let me go over it real quick as I eat this pea pod. The other thing is I planted some peas directly in the ground. So by the time I eat all those, the peas along this fence will be uh, blooming and I can pick those in probably three or four weeks. I'm back up here to the container peas on the deck. These are a little bit stronger. So just to recap, I mean a little bit bigger, is if you put fewer peas in a five gallon container, the plants will get bigger, taller, and produ produce more peas. However, if you crowd more peas into the container, the plants will be smaller, the plants won't yield as much per plant, but the overall yield will be greater than a couple of plants. Welcome to the Rustic Garden. Today I want to give you a full update on the peas that I planted, oh, about two or three months ago. These were all started in peat pots indoors and transplanted into the containers. I'm also going to show you my ground planted peas and I'm going to harvest all of these and then show you each harvest by variety of pea and match them to their seed pack so you have an idea of what you might want to plant next year. First thing is container peas work really really well. Peas do fix their own nitrogen with a root system that uh, has nodules on it that work with bacteria and they can pull the nitrogen actually out of the air. But in a container you can get in, there's one, two, three, four, I don't know, 12 or more vines in each of those. Oh, there's a ladybug. You can see it way back there. So you can really pack in the peas. They don't mind being packed into a space because they do pull their own nitrogen out of the atmosphere. I gave these a feeding when they were about halfway, about half the size with the liquid fertilizer just to give them the other nutrients. Trellising, let's talk about that first. Here are peas that I intentionally did not trellis. And you can see that they hang over. They're early perfection variety. 
and they're really really fragile in that if they got knocked or pulled the stems are hollow they would break off so you do want to trellis your peas and I trellis them pretty much by many different methods this is a tomato cage in here this is for the taller variety a couple of sticks bamboo some jute and you just want to contain them so that they get growing going upward and then they start the tendrils will latch onto each other and it just makes a nice mass of peas that will go straight up to the top of your cage and you do have to pay attention to the size if you get full size peas you're gonna to have to do something with these tomato cages just like this and they work perfectly well the peas are going to start dying out if you notice down at the bottom they're starting to yellow and that just comes from the increase in heat and also the age of the peas so their process is pretty much normal but I, they're just loaded. I mean, there are hundreds of peas on all the plants. So I'm going to harvest these and show you them. You can just use plain poles like this. I only use two of them. And to get them started, I start with some jute down at the bottom. And that's, again, to get the mass growing upward. And once they all kind of latch together, they just stay with the poles and go all the way up. Same thing here, some more poles really really basic trellising but you definitely want to trellis them and just look at all the peas like I said I'm gonna go harvest those let me go show you the peas that I'm growing down in or actually my earth beds. both early perfection one without a trellis and one with a fancier trellis you can certainly use that and you can just see all the peas are hanging nicely much easier to get to when it's trellised than trying to get down to the peas down there but trellising does make a difference, and I just wanted to give you fix this example of the same variety, one without a trellis, and one trellis with something a little more fancy than sticks and tomato You can also set up a chicken wire fence like this and just grow your peas straight up that way. Again, these are my earth planted, or earth bed planted peas. And these two were also planted from peat pots. I didn't start any peas this year straight in the ground. And the reason you might do that is because when peas are able, as a plant, to get outside, the ground conditions aren't always the best for the seeds to actually germinate. And a lot of times they rot because the soil is cold and wet. So if you can get them germinated inside, in peat pots, and then put them out into your garden, your peas will get established, start growing much quicker. Coming around this side, this is just a mass of peas. And here, one of my favorite varieties is this purple potted and it's doing really well and it's actually my tallest pea plant out there and that is taken care of by a tomato cage some bamboo poles and actually that's my cucumber trellis back there I was hoping that it would attach to that but it didn't but again they've grown up through the cage attached to the sticks attached to themselves and the wind will not knock those down now I also have more peas shorter varieties on smaller stakes growing in my railing and one thing that I did to keep rabbits off is I let them grow straight up through chicken wire. Let me bring you around here. There's one more place that I have peas and that's in my sunken containers. And these are a shorter variety. I use these sunken containers. The bottoms are cut out for cucumbers and peas and probably green beans this year. And they're just tre well, it's trellising on a couple of a bamboo post, not even any string or jute or anything like that. Just give them something to hold on to and they will stay upright. There's three main varieties of peas. You can break these down into subcategories and get more. But you have your sugar or snow peas, which are the immature peas in a flat pod. The pod and pea are completely edible. And these are typically what go, in snow, uh, yeah, go into a stir fries. And these are your sugar or your snow type peas. And these are uh, mammoth melting sugar and snowbird, two varieties that I do recommend. Then you have your snap peas. Anything that has the name snap in it is a snap pea, typically. And these are the peas that when you break them, they have a full shell, completely edible, and a mature sized pea. And they get their name because when you break them, they snap. So you got the snap peas, you got your sugar, snow peas, and then you have your shelling peas. And these aren't quite ready yet. These mature first usually. These come in second and then 
the shelling peas come next. And you can't eat the shell. That's why they're called shelling. But when you open them up, they've got great peas inside that you can just take out, pop in your mouth. Welcome to the Rustic Garden. Today I want to talk to you about a couple of ways to trellis peas. Peas have hollow stems. They're very fragile. They need to climb. Climbing makes it easier for you to pick the peas. It also provides them with support so they're not damaged by the wind. One way that you can trellis peas is you can grow them in buckets or even in the ground and you can use tomato cages for the trellis. Peas will easily grow up it, you can see, and you can easily get to all the peas that are growing in there. Another way that you can trellis peas is just by a couple of stakes and stringing them. And you want to string them by putting, you know, a line of string. This is actually jute. Every couple of inches, you can go up a little bit higher as the peas get more mature. And you can kind of weave them in and out of there. But this structure looks a little bit flimsy, but it is strong enough to support the peas. The wind won't damage them, and that's one way to trellis them. I also planted some peas in the ground over here. I provided them a little bit of string to climb, but they're actually clinging to each other and they're climbing on some of the blackberry brambles. So you can mix peas in with some of your other uh, fruit plants or you can even grow them up trees. They're only around for about eight weeks. They won't compete and it's one way to trellis them. You can build something a little more formal. Over here I have chicken wire. This will also double as a cucumber uh, trellis in a couple of weeks, but you can see the peas will grow perfectly fine right up the chicken wire. And over on this side I have another string trellis, but these are dwarf peas, so I didn't need to use as much string or I didn't need as big as trellis, and they'll only grow about this tall. Welcome to the Rustic Garden. Today I just want to introduce you to Tom Thumb Peas. They're a six inch variety pea. It's a full pea, so that means you can't eat the pod, so you're really letting it grow until the peas mature to full size and then you're going to take the peas out. These are again a six inch pea variety. What I found is the pods or the vines tend to grow maybe five to ten inches tall and you can see that there's a lot of peas in there. They've been in a row box for about, I don't know, about 60 days. And one thing is, is you can certainly grow peas uh, of this variety in a flower box. It's only you know, four inches, maybe five inches deep. So you don't need a big container for them. And for those of you that may have limited space, you can uh, have some fresh peas by just growing the uh, Tom Thumb variety. Over here, I've been growing them in a two and a half gallon bucket. And I think there's six to eight plants in there. And these seem to do a little bit more. And that's probably because of the depth of the container. So even though they grew over here in this flower box, it's probably a good idea to have at least a depth of about this far um, when growing this variety. They look a little more hardy and you can see that the vines are longer and there tend to be more peas on there. This is what they look like when you pop them open. Again, these have been growing about 60 days and here's a mature pod. Welcome to the Rustic Garden. Today I want to show you how you can collect pea seeds. And basically by doing this you can save yourself some money. You can also have seeds to trade with other people and if you want to, you can even sell them online. So you can make a buck and use that money for other things in your garden. These are my purple potted peas that I've been growing for several years. I actually forgot where I got them from and forgot the original name, but it's a nice deep purple pod that I really like to grow. They taste great, they grow well, and they really stand out in the garden. They're kind of cool looking. You want to collect them in a Ziploc bag. Right away, put down on there what type of variety you have, purple potted peas. And I don't know if you can see in this corner, but there's just a little pinch of insect dust. You want to make sure you put a pinch of insect dust in your bag because there is a chance that insects, usually beetles, could lay eggs on your peas. They also, uh, there's a chance that this can happen with beans too, but the insect dust will take care of that because if they hatch, what they're going to eat are your pea seeds or your Here's beans. Here's all the peas that I got from those plants. If you're going to save these from the food source, for a food source, it's the same process. Go ahead and collect them, let them dry out just like these peas were doing. But instead of putting insect dust in there, you certainly don't want to eat that. Go ahead and freeze them for 48 hours and that should take care of any kind of insects or um, you know, egg related problems and stuff like that that are associated with your peas or your beans. We're starting to split. Today is the 24th. This was my spring planting of peas. It was probably went to the ground in March or April. 
I should have probably harvested them about two weeks ago, but I was on vacation and of course got busy. But you want to wait till the pea plant is totally dry. When it's dry, the pods will be dry all the way through. A little bit of black mold on there is fine. And you can hear the sound. I mean, they're completely dry. Just take the peas out and put them right into your bag.